If not, it's Senator Fisher. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and thank you to my colleagues for not being available. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here, Madam Secretary. It is nice to see you. Following passage of the bipartisan infrastructure law, today's hearing is an important opportunity to talk with you about the funding that NTIA will be distributing for broadband deployment. As part of that law, I added an amendment to establish a broadband deployment locations map. This mapping tool will create more oversight so that government-funded broadband projects can be looked at clearly in one place. The amendment passed unanimously, showing lawmakers are united in their desire to avoid overbuilding and ensure transparency in broadband funding. But the success of the, this mapping tool will hinge on cooperation with the FCC from all federal agencies that provide funding for broadband deployment. In March, Senator Cortez Masto joined me in writing to agencies, including NTIA, to check up on the progress that has been made so far. Though I did hear back from the FCC by the date requested, I still have not heard back from NTIA. Do you know the status of the agency's response to that letter that we sent? I do not, and I apologize that we didn't make the deadline, and I'll look into it and get back to you right away. Okay. I can tell you, we are collaborating um, very closely uh, with um, the FCC. In fact, Alan Davidson, who runs NTIA, has a weekly meeting with the chairwoman, and we are coordinating with them. The maps are critical, and we're not going to let the money go out the door until we have the maps. And precisely, as, especially in a state like yours, they are incredibly important. So I support the spirit of the effort fully, and I'll get you a better answer on um, your question. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. I know um, how important it is to have that cooperation so that um, all, the, all the different players in this can uphold their responsibilities under the law. We, we want to make sure that we can maximize uh, the broadband infrastructure funding so that all Americans can be reached by this. Um, I would ask you, uh, you testified before the Senate Appropriations Committee in February, and I appreciated uh, that you did recognize the importance of expanding broadband networks to unserved areas first, as the law requires. And I know there have been many comments on this, but I don't think it can be understated. However, at that time, you did add that, quote, this doesn't mean that some of the money won't go to places that already have coverage, end quote, and that competition is not a bad thing, which you stressed again today with competition. I, to me, that seems like two um, conflicting sentiments there. Can you, can you clarify what you mean by this, and how do you square the two? I'm, I am very, very um, concerned that the focus has to be on unserved areas first. Yes, and I agree with you, and the statute is clear, right? Unserved first. Unserved, underserved. Um, the, I think what I was trying to say is every state is different. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, the, re the way we're implementing this program is we are requiring every state to submit to us their state plan. Now, in a state like Rhode Island, for example, there's no unserved. Everyone is served. And they're automatically receiving $100 million. So by definition, there will be some money spent, and everyone's already served. Now, in your state, obviously, that will not be the case. So the priority is crystal clear, unserved first. When we are done with this, it is our goal, ambition, and intent that every single American on a rural land, on a tribal land, on an urban land, has high quality, high speed broadband that they can afford. Um, we do promote competition because competition does reduce prices, which is good for the consumer. Um, but I, I don't know how else to say it. I mean, we're not going to overbuild. We don't want to overbuild. But, I, but what I've learned in, in the past year especially is you cannot overestimate the differences in every community. And so to account for that, we're going to work very closely with governors and states. And I guess I can just assure you um, that in your state, 
at the end of the, this, everyone unserved will be served. Can you refresh my memory? Uh, will you be reviewing every state plan? It, is it required that the department has to uh, approve every state plan? How does, how does that work with it? Yes, yes. So the way it works is um, we're hoping to get the NOFO out May 16th. Okay. We're working hard towards that. That will go out. Every state then has to give us their intention to participate. Once they get, we get that letter, we send them a planning grant. Then they use that planning grant to do a state plan. They're not going to get any more money until we approve of the plan. And there'll be an aggressive back and forth, using the maps, pushing on affordability, et cetera. And then we will approve the plan to make sure everyone is served, and then the money will flow. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair.